Three, five, four, five. Ask not whence the thunder comes, for between heaven and earth is a perilous place, home to a fearsome giant race, who hunger to conquer the mortals below, waiting for the seeds of revenge to grow. The impetus for me to make this film was to take an idea from someone's childhood, an image you have of Jack climbing a beanstalk, encountering giants, and be able to realize that on a full, real scale. But also assign it a story and bring more lore into it and create your own tale. Are you ready, my brother? Jack, he's not your typical hero. He's a young farmer. He's a bit of a dreamer, and he's got that sense of adventure. Did you get that? Hey, hey, that's no way to treat it. The monks of Cloister trying to get the magic beans from being put into the wrong hands. Take some men and find that monk. A series of events. Jack ends up getting the beans. They are holy relics. Don't lose them. And whatever you do, don't get them wet. The princess, Isabella, she's sort of dissatisfied being a princess because she doesn't feel she has any freedom. Let me show you how responsible I can be. Let me step outside without sending a dozen guards to rescue me. Princess Isabel, she's fiery. That's what I love about her. She wants adventure. She goes around to Jack's house in the middle of a storm. I hope you find what you're looking for, Your Highness. Call me Isabel. Eventually, the water hits this bay and up the beanstalk goes. What? The legends are true. Elmont, assemble a team of your best men. Yes, sir. Bring back my daughter. Your Majesty, I want to volunteer. For him to suddenly be on this journey is a big deal for him. What do you suppose is up there? I simply prepare for everything. Like giants? No, everything real. And we get up there, we don't know if there's any giants up there. You suddenly realize there's something amongst this forest. The giant's been imprisoned in Ganshur for about a thousand years. They kind of have the look of the earth in a way. They're not nature creatures, they're living, breathing beasts. At last, mankind have returned. They're uglier than I remember. Fallon, the two-headed general, oh, he's suddenly finding his power in his kingdom usurped. The crown. Yes, the crown. Roderick, he has the druid crown. Whoever has the druid crown will be the king of the giants, and you can rule the world. Tomorrow, you shall return below with me as your new king. Are you mad? <laughs> I'm talking to giants at the moment. Roderick, he's horribly kind of casually evil, but Fallon rules the roost. It's that simple. Jack is not a professional giant slayer. Every time he gets involved in saving the princess and slaying a giant, it's always got to be something of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was fascinating just to see how they brought the giants to life and, and the world they created. You expecting someone? There's lots of aspects of the story. There's humor and, and there's this romance and adventure to it. Let's cut a few of them down to size, shall we? It's got more kind of action than, it, than the fairy tale has. It's all quite impressive stuff. Looks really cool. Here comes the thunder. Giant! Come on, Jack. Ready? Yeah.